Good morning. I hope you are all well and blessed. Let's bow our heads as we start in prayer. Father God, we say thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity to take time out of our busy days and just be quiet and sit at your feet, listen to your word, and allow it to impact our lives. Lord, you know where we come from, you know our ups and downs in life. And thank you that we can trust you, that we know you are in control, and that you are always with us. Open our hearts and our minds, open our ears, that we will be able to hear what it is that you want us to add to our lives today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke 13 from verse 10 to 20. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hand on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on a Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrite, doesn't each of you on a Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abram, whom Satan has kept bound for eighteen long years, be set free on the Sabbath day? from what bound her. When he said this, all the all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perch in its branches. Again he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? We read up to here and praise God for the word that is before us. If we are honest with ourselves, We all have preferences or biases that are part of our life. We might not always be aware of these, but it is in some way an influence that influences our judgment and our views of things. This, to some extent, creates the limitations of tunnel vision, where we focus on a limited image and ignore the bigger picture, which would have given us a different perspective. Tunnel vision. Tunnel vision influences our perceptions of politics or the way we relate to people and how we relate to different kinds of people. It also influences how we relate to people who receive help from social services or those who are better off than what we are. In the same way, tunnel vision influences how we see ourselves or our behavior towards others. Many conflicts or disagreements are the result of tunnel vision, even among our family among close friends, and the same happens among believers and within the church. In our gospel reading, 
we see one of the controversies of Jesus' day, to keep the Sabbath holy and as a day of rest. We know that it is one of those things that still is a debate. The religious leaders of the time were so concerned about obedience to the law of God that a list of rules and regulations were formulated to identify what is and what is not work and what is and what is not allowed on a Sabbath. And although their intentions were pure, they missed the point because of their tunnel vision. Think about it. Would we need 150 pages of legislation to outlaw talking on your mobile phone while you are driving? One clear, constructed sentence should be enough to tell us it is not wise, it's not good, it's not right to use a phone while driving. Throughout the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, he confronted these kinds of regulations, not because he did not agree with what they tried to do with the regulations, but because the regulations became so ridiculous that the main purpose of it was lost. Out of compassion for this suffering woman, Jesus reached out to her and set her free from the bondage of her physical restraint for 18 years. How can that be wrong? And how can this act of compassion be against what God is standing for? How could people think that that would be against the law of God? Imagine what her life must have been like. So often we know a person with disability or deformity is overlooked or ignored. Not because we do not have compassion, but because we are not sure what to say, or how to help, or know if help is needed. Instead of asking, we look the other way, and the person become invisible to society, she rejected and isolated. But Jesus, who we know is filled with compassion and love for his people, could not walk past her or look away. He saw her. He saw her discomfort and pain. He saw her and responded with compassion and miraculously restored her to full health. Wonderful! And yes, we see the people are amazed. And this woman praised God for what he has done. What in our lives needs straightening out? What in our lives is restricting us from living to the full? Whatever the bondage in our lives, Jesus sees us and is willing to set us free. He understands better than what we think possible. Is it maybe now our time to be noticed and touched, that our lives can be straightened out, that we can really live to the full? All we need is to ask, and Jesus will do that for us. But at that time, the religious leaders are not happy. A miracle happens on the Sunday, and they pull out the rule book and turn to address the people. They were real cowards. They did not speak to Jesus. They turned to the people. Look at verse 14. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. This woman did not come to be healed. She came to worship God. That's why she was there, because of her love for God. She didn't ask for anything. 
where Jesus saw a person and an opportunity for tangible love and compassion. In a miracle, the synagogue leader saw the law and the need for rules and restrictions. He definitely had tunnel vision. The rulers missed what the kingdom of God is about. They missed that it is not about rules and restrictions, but about loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Surely then, an act of kindness, as shown by Jesus, is not against God, or disobedience towards the law even. Small acts of kindness are sharing and spreading the kingdom in the same way as the small mustard seed that grow and made a big difference to those around it. As yeast work and spread through all the mixture for the dough to rise, so are our acts of kindness touching lives and spreading the kingdom present in our world. Let's think about that. Each one of us, in our small little way of acting in kindness, does bring the kingdom into our world. In conclusion, what do we learn from this passage? I firmly believe one of the things we learn is that regular worship is still important, as we saw in Jesus being in the synagogue on that Sabbath. And in this lady, who must have been in agony, but still came and worshipped the Lord, it remains a proclamation of our personal faith and an opportunity to worship God in fellowship with brothers and sisters in faith. And it is a way of putting God first. Secondly, we must remember that God cares about people more than rules and programs. And if we truly connect with God's heart and His kingdom, we will show it through our acts of compassion and care for others. We should reveal the love of God through our actions and offer a place of welcome and acceptance to those within the world. And finally, we must never underestimate what God can and will do through our small acts of kindness and faithfulness. It might feel that we can do nothing to change the condition of the world, but know this, we are not alone. We work together in the power of God. Let us remove our blinders to get rid of our own tunnel vision and allow God to reveal to us the bigger picture and a clearer picture of his work and his miracles on earth in our time. And then we will also be overwhelmed with a desperate deep need to worship him, to proclaim him, and to proclaim our faith in him. May that be what we focus on the days ahead of us. Amen. Father God, Thank you for the opportunity to learn from Scripture, to see again that worship is part of our growth and our journey in faith, to be in fellowship with others, bringing to us the opportunity to worship you together. Thank you, Lord, that we know our small acts of kindness is not done in isolation, but done within the presence of your power and it will make a difference. Thank you that we know we just need to surrender ourselves into your hand and you will help us to get rid of our own tunnel vision that we can see your bigger picture and see the miracles that you are still doing in our day and time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.